Hello YouTube, welcome back to another episode of the eBay engine rebuild. We're going to start putting it back together and the first thing we're going to do is look at our cases, find out if they are in fact in good condition, and what we need to rectify any defects and then prepare them for reassembly. So let's get on the bench and have a look. Right, first case I have. It's been through the parts washer. And there are a few things we need to check. First of all, are our studs tight, which they are. Are our stud threads good, which they are. I'll move on to gasket facing things shortly. <coughs> then we have our engine to gearbox. Bolts, studs, whatever you want to call them. That's good. This one isn't. And this is suffering from typical clutch replacement damage where the engine's been bashed about against the, uh, the gearbox. So, I'm just going to check my thread file sizes, and that's the right one. I'm not actually going to find it as such. I'm just going to try and straighten out the rough bits. Like that, which takes the edge off them. And then we're going to lubricate that with a bit of WD-40. Just a bit. And then we're going to try and reform the threads with a thread chasing nut. It's not actually a die, it's just a thread chaser. I might have to use a die in this, I don't know yet. But uh, we're going to start with this one, that's for sure. So, what size is that? Not bigger than that. 17. And hopefully that's square. Yeah, that's good. So just a very short time spent with the thread file has uh, opened the threads enough to run this down. It wouldn't even go on before. Do it by hand, which is always a good sign. Yep, not pretty, but usable. I will run that down again once we're off camera just to give it another go. The top one's good, it's a bit crusty, so that'll do, do these again when I rewash the cases. Because, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to re need a redoing once we've done all this work. So the next thing is to check where your seals will sit and where your barrel will sit, because that's got to be clean. Now, the obvious thing for this sort of a job is to use an abrasive paper, which I may well do. But if you use abrasive paper, you've got to make sure that none of that little grit is what makes it work after all, stays in your engine. So the plan is we will inspect this, we'll clean everything up, and then it'll go back into parts washer again. And then it'll be thoroughly washed again and then blown out with an airline to make absolutely sure there's nothing nasty lurking. I won't be going for a perfect finish on the case, as you can see the very rough cast. You'd have to vapor blast it to get it looking perfect, or you could uh, clean it again and paint it, of course, with uh, some sort of engine silver. I won't be bothering. Right, so we need to get make sure that's clean where our spectacle seals sit, and that's clean where our cylinder sits. So, a bit of Scotch Bright first because it's. Uh, non-damaging. As you can see, most of the time, I don't know if you can see that properly, 
most of the time it does the job perfectly. And you're not putting grit anywhere near your engine using scotch brite, which is why I like it. So I'll continue cleaning that up and the spectacles up and I'll show you them when they're done. So they are now a lot cleaner. There are various minor markings but that's discoloration in there, not, uh, not dirt or anything, that's all clean. So while we're here we'll make sure the, uh, bit rough there, make sure the studs are clean. Good. All the faces where the bolts go are okay, they're all pretty good. Not worried about any of them. I don't like the rust on the uh, dipstick tube. So I will touch that in. In a minute. Well, after it's been cleaned again. Right, so. Everything's looking good on this side. So let's spin it over and see what we've got over here. Now then, this is slightly trickier. Can you still see that? Yeah, pretty much. So we've got the remains of uh, old gasket goo, which needs to come off. And there's some crud in there as well, needs to come off. And then uh, again, I'm going to start by using Scotch Brite and just see where we can get. But I'm also going to have a blade, a, a single sided razor blade, just in case some of this is uh, particularly bad. But I don't think it's going to be. And then we'll have a close look at all our shells and things. Well, casing where the shells sit. Right, so let's get on with that. Right, I'm going to have to work backwards to accommodate the camera and the light. Let's hope it works. Right. I think my scotch is a bit worn out. Let me just cut another piece. This isn't particularly aggressive stuff. You can get ones that will cut a bit more. But I just happen to have this lying about. Right, so there we are. That's what I'm going for. Nice, even, matte finish. Hope you can see that. So there's no point you watching me do this because uh, I'm going to do exactly the same all the way around. So I will bring you back when I've finished and we'll see what we've got. Okay, the crankcase halves have been through the washer again having had all the gasket area cleaned off. The bores for the Tappets have been checked for scoring and marking, gouging, they're all perfect. Where the bearings sit, the main bearings sit, are all in excellent condition. Very minor marking, as you'd expect from a used engine. This isn't new after all. All the surface points that the bow is going to fit, etc, etc, they've all been cleaned. The dowels are in place. Basically, I think we're ready to start rebuilding the engine. Which is why it's now sitting on a clean piece of paper because from now on everything's going to have to be done with extreme cleanliness. The outside is still not perfect but I'm not going to be chasing perfection. I just need to make sure it's clean-ish. So that's going to be the next step. This half is ready to go, the other half sitting in the parts bath at the minute being cleaned. 
So we need to lay it down and start preparing ourselves for fitting various things. Right, the uh, crank's going to go in first. I'm going to use a bit of assembly lube because this engine is going to be sitting for a bit. If you're going to be using it fairly quickly, then you just oil it. But uh, this one might be sitting for a while as it's going to be a spare. And assembly lube's fantastic stuff. It stays sticky and provides lubrication and protection for a very long time. Right, so, right, the crank's ready to go. We looked at that before briefly. So I'll go move in front of you slightly. It's, uh, there's no plane at the bottom end. The bushes are marked, but uh, nothing dreadful. To be honest, you'd expect some marking. The journals are fine, so we're going to have to put a bit of oil on them. And we'll pump a bit of oil in through there. Give it a spin. And then there are two holes have to line up with those dowels and that's what we're going to try and do now which uh, hopefully you'll be able to see so we need to feed the crank through like so and it all drops into place there in theory Check that you're in your dowels, which we are. Good. Got lucky hands. So whilst we've got access to this side, I'm just going to pour some oil around the uh, con rub. We will do the same on the other side. A bit more in through the journals. And in a bit of assembly loo on your bearing shell. Good. Right, so slightly taken aback, it drops in so easily. And uh, when I checked, it hadn't. So the reason I knew it hadn't was because I'm using second hand, well not second hand, the original crank. You can see the witness marks through the center which line up with the slots and it wasn't quite right wasn't quite in and then if you look through this gap here you can tell because there's a gap if you haven't got it in right and it's uh, this needed rotating very slightly in order to uh, line up the dowel and down it went there are also lines scribed in to the uh, shells which have to match the case halves so it's fairly obvious it wasn't fully home and something that you have to check every time because unless it is fully home the case is not going to go back together that's for sure so I think everything's good now everything looks to be lined up the lines are in place everything matches the witness marks so we can move on Right, camera's going to go in, so same as before, we'll give us a bit of assembly lube. And also the cam followers. So they need to be uh, well lubed up as well. They're nice and firm. Then we'll get pushed back again later. So now we need the camshaft. The 
camp shaft itself has a dowel bearing which is going to fit there. But first, I'm just going to uh, cover everything with the assembly lube. And I'm going to have to reposition you again because uh, the tension is going to turn to this side of the engine. So I'll just, assemble, I'll just lube that up and then bring you back. Right, the camshaft, which I just popped in, goes in exactly the same way as the crank. Dowel lines across to show you when you're in line with the case. And then the timing is taken care of. I've marked them with white paint, hopefully so you can see them a bit more. There's two lines on the cam sprocket, one line on the crank, and the line on the crank fits in between those two. Hopefully you can see that highlighted. Let me just turn it back a little bit. Maybe you can see it better there. Two there, one there. That two's got to be in between those two. That's it. Cam's in. So now we need to spin it round and fit the oil pump main housing which sits on the end of the cam which we will do now so again I'll turn you off and recompose but before I do though let me just mention because I keep forgetting things so I wander around you could put assembly lube on these but I'm just going to give them a really good squirt of oil so that the first time they start there's oil around If any gets on your case half that you're going to apply sealant to, then obviously you need to wipe it off and degrease it theoretically. Yep, that's good. Right, okay, let me uh, spin you around. The cam lobes are discoloured, but still good. They're not, there's uh, no sign of the case hardening being damaged. They're just uh, discoloured from old oil. They stain, just like the crank stains. So each lobe will get a good smother of uh, assembly lube. Cam followers on this side have already been lubed. Also, when I first start an engine like this, I do take a great amount of care to make sure the oil's up and things. So I'll go through all that when this is done. Right, so the cam's in. It just drops in, which is good. So now we need to go and find our oil pump. In fact, I'll just spin you rather than reposition you. Got bad back today and I'm really struggling, I'm afraid. So. I think I might just do this bit and then call it a day because it's uh, starting to get to me. So I'll go and dig out the uh, oil pump. Right, the uh, postman's been. So let's have a look and see what we have, shall we? Bit less, but there we go. Now, first stop, we have a nice glazer gasket set, top quality stuff glazer. Excellent. And we have a gearbox boot, which I need, a petrol filler a pair of wiper blades, which I also need. An oil pressure switch, FAE, another good make. An invoice, which uh, is always the worst part of these things. And then a bag. And what have we got in our bag? Let me see if we can dig out the bits by bit. So we've got some proper piston sir clips. 
I don't know if you can see them with proper ears on, unlike the rubbish spring clips that Citroen use. Got some sump washers. We have some proper Balstone oil seals. We have two point screws, some manifold knots, and only one, no, no, two, sorry, I was getting worried there, two oil filler, oil filler, oil cooler seals, because I don't think they come in the gasket set. I only do. Okay, so I now have two spare oil cooler seals because they do come in the asset set. Silly me. Right, so they're the things I wanted to sort my engine out plus a couple of other bits and pieces. So I will put them away for the minute until we're ready to use them. And... Uh, get something else on the bench and get on with it. Good, right, that's that. Right, excitement of the uh, postal delivery over, back to the oil pump. Which is going to uh, sit in here. Now, as you can clearly see, there are two bolt holes on this side, three on the other. So it's fairly uh, easy to line up. And also, if you turn it over, there's a hole in the bottom, which lines up with that and a hole in the side which lines up with that. So the inside here should be checked for uh, grooving, gouging, all that sort of stuff. This one's absolutely fine. We're going to look at the rest of the oil pump in a minute. Uh, we'll just deal with the cover first. Now, in your gasket set, Should be a paper gasket which obviously lines up with the cutout in the cover. Now Citroen specifically say not to add any sealant to the paper gasket which is fine and I'm not going to. However personally and this is purely my own uh, little thing and I will be deviating from the workshop manual on several occasions, and it is all down to personal preference. I always just give it a very light smear. Very light smear. There's a bit of grease. Now, don't ask me why. I was just always told to make sure that any gasket had some sort of covering on it. And a little bit of grease ain't going to do any harm. But if you're worried about these things, stick with what it says in the manual, ignore me. Right, so, we know those two holes have got to line up, and it's got to fit over the can. So a small amount of lubrication again, won't go amiss, you never have too much. And then it'll go on. And then, when I've got it in place, I will bring you back. Now, it's not going to go on all the way yet. It's going to be because I've got to get the other case half on. But it's going to be virtually down to its place. So, can you see the bolt holes? No, you can't. So, I'll just turn you off and realign you. you just got to make sure that your bolt holes and your gasket are lined up, which they're not, so it's coming off again. It's moved very slightly. And we'll give it another go. It's difficult because I want to put my head where you are. There we go. Right. 
They're lined up pretty well. As I say, there will be a small amount of movement available when the case halves go together before they're bolted down fully. Now, there's no need to put the rest of the oil pump together now. And I don't, I'm not going to, but as we're nearing the time length for this video, that probably makes it vaguely bearable. I might as well talk about the rest of the oil pump and then we'll leave it there for the day and then put the case house together in the next video. So I'm just going to turn it off and recompose. Okay, so the internals of the oil pump. You have the larger outer ring and then you have the inner which moves around inside there squeezing the oil around. And then we have our outside cover plate which I'll come to in a second. So the only thing to look for really is scoring. Now the inside edges of this are absolutely great. There's a little bit of crud still left there. I thought I got rid of all of that. I'll give it another wash. The edges are all pretty good. There's very, very minor marks, but nothing of any consequence. There's no scoring on the faces. A tiny amount there of marking, but you, can, you can't even feel it with your thumbnail. So it is a good pump. Now in the workshop manual it shows you how to measure clearance the pump but frankly this is so good I won't be bothering so it's going to go back together which we will do shortly so I'll show you that going back together once the case halves are done so I can go to one side for a minute and then there is a pump outer cover which I've cleaned up again you're looking for scoring or gouging around here because if there's lots of end flow on the pump It'll grind away, hammer away at that surface. But again, very, very, very minor marking. I've got absolutely no hesitation in using this again. Now, there is a, a rubber O-ring in the centre, which has to be replaced. So using a pick, Very brittle, very hard, I should say, not brittle, that's the wrong word. And then in our gasket set, there should be, and there is, a nice new o ring. It just gets rolled into the hole like so. Oh no, not like so, pops straight back out here. Oh, now then, that's not very good, is it? That should roll in and stay in. You little tinker. That's not very good at all. I do not like that. Now this is a good quality O-ring set, allegedly, it's sold as such, and it is made by a decent firm. So that should sit in there properly. Right, well, what I shall do is I shall roll it in properly and then I shall leave it upside down. We have our oil filter housing which somebody has been at with a chisel or a screwdriver to get the oil filter off which is really silly. However, I've checked where the seal sits and it's well inside those marks. So that part will still seal properly. And then on the bottom of that, there is another O-ring. So let's have a go with that one. And again, it is fossilised. There we go. And there should be one for that in the year. 
kit as well. Let's hope it fits a bit better. Just, it's not great. It wants to come back out. Right, I'm going to have to uh, leave that sitting as well and hope that that settles down because none of those are great, which is very, very disappointing. Here's our oil pump strainer. Which also has an O-ring. Now these can be awkward to fit too, so we're going to have a bit of fun with this. Right. Now, in theory, this new O-ring should slide over that and into place. I'm not feeling very hopeful, having seen how the other two went on. But anyway, we'll give it a go. My hands are really slippery at the minute. Let me just go and wipe my hands. Right. There it is in. And again, Citroen say you shouldn't apply no gasket sealant to this. So let me just pull you up. It goes in there. With the, oh, by the way, I cleaned all this out, blew it all through in the parts washer. And that just sits in there like that with the oil hole, like so. And that will get bolted down when your cases go together. But that's where it sits, with the pickup hole facing downwards. So that will be left there for a minute until we're ready for the case house. Right, just a quick postscript before we go, oh, there's no point leaving without mentioning this. I uh, had to use a little bit of grease to hold that o-ring in, it didn't want to sit on its own. So a small amount of grease, the excess, has now been wiped away and it's secure. The one for the oil pump's fine. Not the oil pump, the uh, oil filter housing is fine, it's stayed in place on its own. So there you go. It's ready to fit. So that's it for this video, I think, as time has marched on. So the next video we will be uh, putting the two house back together. Assuming, of course, I can get all my own rings to stick properly. Right, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, click the like button. It all helps with YouTube's algorithms. Uh, and we'll see you for the next video.